Hello you guys! I have been wanting to make this video for so many months now um, and it's finally time. I have put all of my thoughts and just everything I can remember from my breastfeeding experience into my notes app and I'm going to try to touch base on everything for you guys. I really want this to be a source for new moms to be able to watch this, be able to just pick up maybe helpful tips and tricks that helped me along my breastfeeding journey with my twin. So I did a poll over on my Instagram asking you guys what questions you had, what you wanted to know. I really just wanted to be an open book and just share as much helpful information as possible. So I'm just gonna answer some of these questions and we're gonna dive into it. So I'll start with positions. Um, how I got comfortable breastfeeding, if I, how I tend and breastfed them. Um, and what's funny about this is when I started thinking about making this video, and someone had asked me what positions I would nurse them in, I didn't think that I really had like a rhythm or specific positions that I did, but looking back on pictures, getting them ready for this video, I noticed there was kind of like an evolution of how I would hold them as they were growing um, and what was comfortable for us. So when they were brand new newborn babies, um, I had a twin go pillow and I would stack it underneath. This is a picture of us. This was like the day after I came home from the hospital with them. And I initially did the football hold where I would tuck each baby like in my arm like this. And we were on top of the breastfeeding pillow and I would sit in my rocking chair and nurse them like that. Um, that's also how I did night feeds when they were newborns. And I would just get comfy in my chair, have my husband pass me the babies. And when they were newborns, that's how I did it. Now, as they started getting bigger, it was hard to hold them like that while they were wiggling. And so I needed more structure and more control over the situation. So I think at about, I wanna say they were probably 10 weeks. I honestly can't remember, but when they started getting bigger and that football hold was not comfortable anymore, I would kind of stack them on top of each other. So this is a picture of how I would just lay one underneath and then I would like support the other one with my hand under the baby. And I had more control. It felt like one really long baby. They were just both latched and I was able to feed them at the same time. So this is what we did for a while. I would, this was me feeding them at a family gathering. Um, because I, could, I had so much control holding them in this direction versus the football hold. It was just what was comfortable for us. So definitely play around with positions and find what works best for you because what works for me may not work for you, but this was definitely the most comfortable for each stage. Then as they got bigger, I would say we switched to this position when they were about six months old because they were so big, I couldn't hold them like this anymore. My arms just were not long enough. So I laid them both on the sides in my arms like this. This picture, I would just cup them and hold them in my arms. And I could lay down feeding them like this. Um, a lot of times I would get rest while they were nursing like this. And I was also able to sit in a chair. This was a very comfortable position for us. And this is how I nursed them until I weaned them. So the positions definitely changed as they grew. There wasn't one position that we used over the two years um, that worked for every stage. We had to like shift and change as they got bigger and just do what worked for us. And so now we're going to touch on a topic that I feel like is probably a little controversial when it comes to breastfeeding, but I have a pretty firm stance on it, um, especially having breastfed on demand with twins. Liz asked, did you nurse in public and were you shy? And the answer is no. I feel like initially, like when I was getting the like hang of it and like I wasn't super comfortable yet, I was a little bit shy just because it was so new, but I fed on demand. So if my babies were hungry and we were at a family gathering, like I was gonna feed them. Or if we were at dinner and everyone else was eating and they were hungry, I fed them. And usually I could do it pretty discreet. And if I was in public, I would feed them one at a time. And most of the time people wouldn't even notice. I just didn't like, make a big scene about it. I didn't even put on a cover. I would just like casually lift my shirt and like I usually had a tank underneath. So it just felt very comfortable for me um, personally and how I wanted to nurse my babies. Okay, so I got a lot of questions about night feeds. Um, 
and how I handled those. Joni asked, how did you handle the nights? I think that those are pretty hard. Um, and the night feeds definitely were hard, like especially in the beginning when we were using the pillow and they were newborns, they were so tiny. I would wake up for each feed and we were never really on a schedule. It was just kind of whenever they woke up, they would get up. Um, I think it was like every two or three hours I had to wake them up when they were newborns to nurse them, um, to keep my supply up and also to get them back to birth weight. I would go to my chair and I would use the twin go pillow, which would stack them up and I would do the football hold. Um, and then when we switched to, I don't even know what it's called, but when I would lay one underneath and then the other on top and hold them like this, um, I switched to laying in my bed. I would just sit up and do that in my bed because I didn't really use any more support pillows. I would just use like blankets or just hold them because that's what was comfortable for me. So I really only used a nursing pillow for like the first six weeks. And then I would just like get in a comfortable position. I would, sometimes I would put my knees up and just like hold them like this and use my knees as a support. Um, and just really whatever felt comfortable for us. As they got bigger, when I was able to lay them on top of me, I think around six months, I would just lay them both on top of me and sleep while they were laying on top of me and I would just get more rest. That's how I did night feeds. It was, it's definitely a blur looking back, but we got through it and <laughs> we all survived. I did get a couple questions about pumping. Um, someone asked, did you pump after nursing at the beginning and, how, and for how many months if you did? I also got another question about, um, did you pump before giving birth at all to get colostrum? So my experience pumping was pretty minimal. I did pump to build up a stock in the fridge because I had that fear, you know, if anything ever happened to me, I wanted to have enough milk in the freezer that they could use in case they wouldn't um, take formula. I just wanted to be super perfect, prepared. I did pump a little bit and I also pumped when the boys were like six months old to get a stock for my nephew because my sister-in-law couldn't breastfeed or pump. So I did pump, but pumping was really hard for me because every time I would get in a groove of pumping and <laughs> exclusively breastfeeding, I would get mastitis. So it was just too much on my body and my body was telling me no. <laughs> so I didn't pump after, I think I think I got mastitis two or three times. And then after that, I was like, I'm done. No more pumping for me. I'm just gonna produce what my babies need. So I did pump a little bit, um, but if I didn't stay on top of it and like keep that oversupply, I would get an infection and it was super painful. So um, I personally, if I ever had twins again and I was breastfeeding, I would just not pump. I would just breastfeed and let my body rest a little bit more because that was definitely a lot. Um, and I did not collect any colostrum while I was pregnant. I just wanted to nurse them when they came out. I also didn't get my milk for, I think it was like five days. My milk did not come in. So they were getting a lot of colostrum initially. And I also did not supplement at all while I was waiting for my milk to come in. I would just latch them every two hours. And I was very, I was very scheduled in that sense. Like when I was waiting for my milk to come in, they latched every two hours and they got that colostrum. And um, then my milk came in, they got back to birth weight. And then they just kept growing into chunky little monkeys. So um, no, I did not collect colostrum before they got here. I also got a lot of questions about schedules with breastfeeding. And for me, I am not a super schedule oriented person. And so I just fed on demand. The only time I ever did a schedule was in the beginning when my milk didn't come in and they were super drowsy and sleepy. I would have to wake them up to get that colostrum and to also trigger my body to start producing milk. So that's the only time I really did a schedule. Other than that, I just fed on demand anytime they were hungry or fussy. Like I was a human pacifier while I was breastfeeding them. Questions about supply. Um, somebody asked any tips to keep your supply up? Has your supply ever dipped? I'm going through it. So I did have one dip in my supply when I got sick. I think the boys were like seven or eight months old. I can't remember. I think seven or eight months old because we had just started solids and I started those at around eight months. So I want to say they were probably eight months old. I had a supply dip while I was sick and I just drank a lot of water and kept nursing even though my milk was not really there. I wanted to keep telling my body to keep producing. So we got through it and my supply came back as soon as I was feeling better. Another thing I wanted to touch on about supply, and this question makes me think of it. Somebody asked, did you take anything that helped with your milk supply like supplements or tea? 
So I didn't take anything. There are a lot of like milk cookies and supplements and things you can take. But for me personally, it boiled down to just latching my babies consistently, um, especially in that beginning time, like that beginning period when your milk is coming in and you're trying to regulate, latching every two hours and doing lots of skin to skin and drinking lots of water is the biggest tip I can give you guys to have a successful breastfeeding journey because those first few weeks matter so much. So you can take all the supplements, you can take all the sugary drinks, you can take all of that, but ultimately what's gonna help your body the most is latching your baby and staying hydrated. Um, also body armor drinks were a big deal when I was breastfeeding. It's because a lot of them have coconut water, which is just like super hydrating. So you can just drink coconut water without all the sugar of a body armor drink. I stayed hydrated and then also calorie intake. I was more focused on eating nutritious foods and drinking a lot of water versus just calories. So like when you when you are breastfeeding, you have a much bigger appetite, but I would try to focus on like proteins and nutrient dense foods versus like just caving and eating bread or whatever I can get my hands on. I definitely think that having a more nutritious diet helped my supply stay up to where I could keep my memory card filled up. So I had to go get another one, but um, I'm back. So I got quite a few questions on um, our marriage after we had the babies, especially since I was the one doing all of the feedings. And um, I wanna address this comment. I got this comment that said, could you also talk about resentment in the marriage after having a baby? If not, TMI. Um, and I feel like this is a really important topic, especially when one partner out of a relationship is taking such a big load of taking care of the babies, right? Cause like when, if you're exclusively breastfeeding, you're not using bottles or anything else. So literally all of the feeds were on me through the night and all through the day. One thing that we had figured out prior to the babies getting here is that I really wanted to breastfeed. So in the middle of the night when like I was up doing feeds, Nathan was up changing diapers or if I was just feeding one of them, he would soothe the other one or try to put them back to sleep if they didn't fall asleep nursing, that kind of stuff. So we were always both contributing and even though I did the feeds he was still carrying a, a big portion of the load of work so I don't feel like there was a lot of resentment I know like there were times when we both got really tired and short with each other but ultimately we knew going into this that I really wanted to breastfeed and he was super supportive of that so we had a really good mindset walking into it and I think that's so important. A lot of the times, especially in the beginning when I was learning how to nurse the babies and tandem feed, Nathan would help me latch them because like he could get different views and like he also watched videos and really tried to learn as much as he could so he could help me. And I think his support was a huge factor in me being able to successfully breastfeed them. So. Support is huge. I also had my mom who had breastfed 10 babies, so she obviously knew a lot, a lot about it. I think mindset is 50% of the battle and like walking into this journey, um, especially initially, it was not easy. Both of the boys had a really hard time latching and because they weren't latching right, they weren't sucking right and so my nipples really went through it and there were times when they were even bloody because they weren't latching correctly so we just kept pushing through we kept trying different things if something didn't work out we tried something different and i think you have to go into it with the mindset of just because this worked for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you and you have to keep trying things until you find your groove i also don't think that i put a lot of pressure on myself in the sense that like it was breastfeeding or it was going to be the end of the world like we did have formula in the house in case we needed it it wasn't like this is going to be the only option period but for me i told myself it was going to be the only option until i couldn't for one reason or another and so i really had to push through a bunch of mental battles to be able to successfully get through those first few weeks because those were brutal but once i got into a groove i would say it about four months, it got really easy because they knew what they were doing. I knew what I was doing. I officially stopped breastfeeding them at around 23 months. So, or 20, one was 22 months and one was 23 months. So it was right under the two year mark. And I just look back now and I look at all these pictures and some of it is 
definitely just like a fog trying to remember it because like there were times where I feel like I just like mentally blacked out and got it done because it was hard and I was exhausted but looking back I'm really proud of us because we learned how to do it and we did it. The last few questions I'm gonna address were weaning them and how I weaned them. And it was honestly so gradual that I didn't even feel it. I know like if you do, I know that if you cut, um, cut it off cold turkey, you can go through like hormone changes and being engorged, like a bunch of painful, uncomfortable things. So I really wanted to like gradually make it to where it was kind of like a seamless process for me and for them. So when I stopped breastfeeding them, they were only nursing like when they woke up from naps or when before they went down for bed. So it was like so few and far between. And I think that was huge for us because eventually they just stopped asking for it and I stopped offering it because it, it just felt right. It felt like it was the right time. Nothing was forced. It just kind of gradually happened for everybody. So I wasn't in any pain. I didn't go through any crazy hormone changes. And if I ever have another baby and I breastfeed them, I'm going to do it the same way because that was the easiest way to end all of it really hope that this was a helpful resource for you guys i feel like i could go on and on and on talking about this i definitely might have left some things out so if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments and i'm so happy i finally had the opportunity to make this video because i feel like the further i get away from when we ended our breastfeeding journey i i'm starting to like forget things so even looking back on these pictures it's like oh my goodness i forgot how I held them. You know, I forgot this or I forgot that. So this was a fun little refresher. Um, and definitely feel free to drop any questions you guys have and I will try to answer them in the comments and maybe even make a part two. So thank you guys so much for watching this um, and I will see you guys next time.